Please listen carefully. Hi, this is Matt, and welcome to another edition of From the Workbench. Today we're going to be covering the new full throttle files and how they're changed in the Loke programmer and the need for the new 4.4.21 software in order to use those files. And we're going to go over some of those changes in the software and uh, why it's important that we use that versus uh, previous versions. So let's get started. We're going to start with this uh, 73426. Um, this is the new uh, EMD 16 cylinder 645E with the full throttle FT um, settings in it. Now, this is good for like a GP38 or SD38 or any of those in dash 2 modes. Um, they, uh, um, this is a file that we've had in the past, but we've added the full throttle features to it. So, when you open this file, First off, make sure if you're looking for the full throttle features, always look for the FT in the file name. And you're going to notice that a few things have changed due to the, the 4.4.21 software. Now again, you will need this software because there's been some firmware updates and these files were made with the new firmware. So if you're not using this software, it won't read the, the new files. So it'll tell you there's a problem and that you'll need to upgrade your log programmer. So make sure you upgrade. Um, as you can see, I'm doing the video in the beta version, but um, we've tested this pretty well and uh, we haven't really found any differences yet. So you probably won't see anything different when you finally get the release file. So um, the first thing that we're going to see is that the function mapping for the manual notching is a little bit different. We've actually removed the typical ESU manual notching out of F9 and F10 and we've added something called drive hold. Now drive hold completely separates the sound from the motion. Basically it locks the motor at whatever speed you're going when you press the button. So if you've pressed it and you're going a scale 30 miles an hour, the speed will stay there and this allows the prime mover sounds to go up and down with the throttle. So it, it essentially separates the sound from the motion. Now because you can be going 30 miles an hour and have the throttle all the way down to stop which would give you the coasting sound uh, or idle sounds as you're moving along we have a, a logical function and this is nothing new but we're using it for this called disable brake sound because since the throttle is now down at stop and we're still moving we don't want to hear the brake squeal in this case so we're disabling it when the drive hold is pressed now the next button would be the F10 independent brake button. Now this is very similar to some of the other brands of independent brakes. Um, we've done that on purpose so that they'll play nice together if you decide to, to consist two different brands. Um, it's typically better to consist two of the same brands. Overall, you'll, you'll, things will just run a little bit better. Uh, there's just some subtle differences in, in many different areas throughout the decoder that it's just better if you run the brands together. doesn't mean that you can't run them. It's just that it's a little easier to get the initial setup done if they're the same brand. So, but regardless, we, haven't, um, we have applied a new break. Um, this will work very simply by pressing the button, you'll, you'll come to a stop and um, you can adjust some of those settings in our brake settings. Now, for both of these to work the best, I do recommend that you go into your motor settings. I'm sorry, <laughs> I made a mistake. Into your driving characteristics and you change your acceleration and deceleration. Um, I would personally turn both of these up just a little bit just to get you better real world physics. Um, a real locomotive with all the mass, and especially if, if you have a train behind you, it's going to slow down much slower than what our typical models do. So when you're using your, your drive hold and especially your brake, um, you can turn the throttle to stop and the engine will continue to move um, at a, a slower deceleration until you press the brake then it will brake much faster and you'll notice the brake difference from your normal speed of just turning the throttle down. So it also slows everything down and just gives you a much more realistic feel to your, to your operating. 
Now there's two other features that are included into the, the new full throttle feature set. One of them is called the coast button. Um, now it does pretty much what you want it to do or what it says is that you're going to coast. You press this button and the sound will go to coast and it doesn't matter where your throttle is at in terms of speed. You can be um, you know, accelerating while coasting sounds or you can be decelerating. Um, it basically just locks the speed at coast sound wise and your motion will be whatever you want it to be. It's almost the opposite of drive hold. Drive hold locks the motor and the coast locks the, the sound at coast. Um, the antithesis of that would be the notch 8 feature uh, or run 8 as it's called in here. Um, and run 8 can be used, say you're running over rolling hills and you want your speed to be uh, flexible. Maybe you want to slow down as you're going up a hill and speed up as you're going downhill with a, a real heavy drag freight, maybe a heavy coal train where you need to be in notch 8 to maintain a speed but you want to physically see the train go faster and slower depending on the terrain. So this would lock the sound into notch 8 and allow you to do that. Uh, again, Coast would do the same thing, but it would lock it into Coast. Now, one feature for the Coast button, and uh, just as a quick note, these Coast and Run 8 buttons, along with any of our function buttons, um, you know, we talked about uh, the, the uh, independent brake and how that will work well with other brands that are out there. Sometimes those brands aren't set up on the same function buttons. So any of these functions, any of these sounds can be put on to any function button that you'd like to have them on. So if you're matching another brand or just matching your favorite um, you know, situation in terms of function buttons, every function button can do anything that any of the other function buttons can do in Loke Sound Decoders. So keep that in mind as you're, as you're setting this up. You can put them anywhere you'd like. So let me get rid of these just to kind of clear the screen. Now in a non-dynamic brake locomotive, you're, uh, if you're running in a consist with dynamic brake locomotives, the sound will not work the same as your dynamic brake engines. Now on the prototype, uh, let's say in an EMD, you know, this is a 16-cylinder 645, so in this locomotive, the sound will go from wherever it is when you put the engine into dynamics, it'll go down to idle, the electricity will dissipate out of the traction motors, and once that can be done, the, the polarity changes, and you can start using your dynamic brake throttle and, and come back up. When that happens, your prime mover will build back up again. In EMDs, it's typically around notch 4, and that's what happens in this file. Now, if this were a non-dynamic brake engine, you wouldn't want that to happen if, if it was in consist with other dynamic brake engines because there's, there's no dynamic brake uh, handle in that engine. It does not come back up. So what would happen is that that engine would stay in idle. So with our new coast feature, we can now duplicate that exactly correct. So instead of, in this case, we have the dynamic brake logic feature, which means the engine will slow down faster uh, because your dynamic brakes are on. In this case, we want to leave that on because we are in consist with other engines that do have dynamic brakes. Um, your shift mode is telling the prime mover to come down. So we actually don't want that to be on. So let's remove the shift mode. Uh, that's just saying that in the prime mover sound slot of this file, it's gonna, the sound is going to take a different path, um, you know, non-dependent on speed. It's this, this button is telling the sound to come down to idle and then build back up again to notch 4. We don't want that to happen. So uh, we're just going to remove that. Now, we also don't want the dynamic brake fan to play because, again, this would be a non-dynamic brake engine. So we remove the fan, but instead we put in our new coast feature. Now, when we press notch, or I'm sorry, function 4 while we're moving, this is going to slow down a little bit quicker, just like your dynamics were on in the consist uh, with the other engines that truly do have dynamics. But your prime mover sound is going to come down to coast, and it's going to stay there until you've turned the dynamic brake button back off again. 
And in the prototype, the prototype situation, this is how this engine would run in consist with other dynamic brake engines. Now, one thing to think about is that on the prototype, if the non-dynamic brake locomotive is leading, you do not want to press the dynamic brake button. Because if that engine's leading, remember, there's no, thr there's no handle in there for the dynamic brakes. So you actually could not activate even the dynamic brakes in the, en the other engines in consist. So if, you're gonna, if you want to have dynamic brakes in a consist with engines that have them, now again, this is your own railroad, so you can run it any way you want. But the prototype would make sure that there's a dynamic brake engine in the lead, so that way the engineer can run from that engine and activate the rest of the engines that have dynamics throughout the consist. So this is just showing an engine that would be in the middle of that consist. So this is how you would set that up. Um, and that's pretty much it for function mapping in terms of the differences. One thing that you're going to see in the new Loc Programmer 4.4.21, though, that is different from the past, is the sounds that are in the, the function buttons will be displayed slightly differently. Um, in the past, with the select files especially, it did not give you the names of the horns. There were 16 horns, and they were kind of hidden in the file. Um, you could go to information and in general and scroll down in a lot of the new files the horns would be listed there. So that's one way to figure this out. Um, the other way to do it now is by going into sound settings, picking uh, or just changing your, your CV48 settings. Um, I'm going to just knock it down one. Uh, 70 means that I'm using number 64, which is my second uh, bell. Um, in this case, it's a bronze bell. And I'm using the number six horn in here. So, um, you know, I'm adding six to uh, 64, or, uh, sorry, can't speak today, six to 64, which gives me my, my number of 70. So just to prove my point, I'm going to go back to general. And the number six horn, as we scroll down, is the S3L number one. We have uh, multiple S3Ls and, uh, you know, in our repertoire, and the, uh, the number one S3L is what we've used in this file. So, you know, CV48 to 6 would be a Leslie S3L. And to prove that now, and to show you the difference in the function mapping, as I go back to function mapping, it has changed. So it's now showing me the exact name of the horn that's being used. Um, and again, I'll, I'll go back and I'll change that to where it was at 71. And very quickly, 71 would be that number 64 bell and the number 7 horn, which would be my Leslie S5T. And I go back to function mapping, and it has changed back to the Leslie RS5T. So um, that's one difference in the new 4.4.21 file. It's also going to show the names of the prime movers a little differently. It used to say prime mover number 1 and prime mover number 2, or... Uh, drive sound one, drive sound two. I'm not sure exactly the semantics right now. Um, now it will still show if you go into the drop-down menu, sound slot one, sound slot two. And but it, in this case, we're using sound slot two, which used to be the second prime mover for drive hold. Um, we do have a way of doing dual prime mover engines, and um, we're going to release one of those in a couple weeks, uh, less than two weeks from the looks of it. So once we do that, I'll do another quick video just to show you the difference in that. But for now, sound slot 2 is drive hold. It has to be in sound slot 2 um, just because of some internals in our software. So um, that's why we wanted to change the name rather than saying drive sound 2. It now is drive hold, and it's a little more clear as you're doing your function mapping. So that is it in a nutshell in terms of what the differences are in the function mapping from full throttle files and uh, with the addition of 4.4.21. Um, one last thing as a reminder, and I have done another video already called Show Change CVs, but if you've made these changes in the file and you don't have a low programmer hardware, you can still use this software and you can download it for free from our website. You can make these changes so you can set things up the way you'd like. And then you can go up to Tools, and you can go to Show Change CVs. And this will give you a list of what CVs you need to change in your command station 
to apply the changes that you've made in function mapping or in maybe your motor control or wherever you'd like. Um, I'll do a quick example of that. I did not change my driving characteristics. So say for brake time, personally in my own engines, I have this just about all the way up. So we're going to set that to 255. And because I like to uh, you know, have some slower accelerations, I'm going to knock this up to actually, uh, well, let's just knock it up to about 150. And again, just to show you what I was talking about with the show change CVs, you're now going to see that we've added CV3 to 150 and CV4 to 255. So this is just showing that in your command station, if you want to make these changes, you can just simply click Show Change CVs. This will give you a list. I, you know, I, I'll give you a hint to do these in order because sometimes your CV31 and CV32s could be different um, from one set of parameters to the next. So just do them in order and everything should work just like you had a look programmer and you were using your, your, uh, the hardware in there to do your CV changes. So, so that's it for today. Again, this has been Matt Herman from ESU and I hope you enjoy the new full throttle features. Uh, keep an eye out. Um, we are going to be adding a, a quick video on showing the engine and how you press the buttons to make all of this stuff work. So have a great day, and we'll talk to you soon. Please listen carefully.